we have the San Francisco 49ers as the sixth seed going up to the top seeded Green Bay Packers in cold ass Lambeau Field on Fox. So this is a week, week three rematch of the 49ers home opener in week three. The Niners erased a fourth quarter 24 to 14 deficit and turned that into a 28 to 27 lead at the two minute warning. But um, that was the problem for the 49ers. They it, they left Aaron Rodgers so much time on the clock that he was just picking apart that Niners weak ass secondary, and once they burned all that time um, on the clock, they set up Mason Crosby to kick a game winning field goal and break the hearts of us Niners fans as the Packers beat the Niners thirty to twenty eight on Levi's turf. So. Again, this is the, the Packers' first game since Week 18. They got the top seed. Um, they're 13 and five. Um, but first, let's talk about the 49ers. You know, obviously, six seed in the playoffs. They're the last lowest remaining seed after the Philadelphia Eagles got their ass kicked by the Tampa Bay Bucks. Um, so going into this game, the Niners, um, you know, they kind of have a little bit of momentum of sorts. You know, in Week 18, they beat the Rams um, in a comeback to clinch this wild card spot. And then they had to open their playoff slate going to the three-seeded uh, NFC East champion Dallas Cowboys in Jerry's world. Um, it, it wasn't really much of a home field disadvantage, uh, road disadvantage for the Niners because it was pretty much like a kind of like sea of red for San Fran in Arlington. So in that game, you know, you got strong uh, performances from um, the running game from Elijah Mitchell and Debo Samuel and then the defensive line was just all over Dak Prescott in annihilating that so-called vaunted Cowboys offensive line. But then one critical mistake from Jimmy Garoppolo, a interception in the fourth quarter, that that was like the rallying cry. That was like the ignition for the for Dak Prescott and the boys to get back in this game, to to rally the troops together. And try to t- take this lead. Um, you know, at that point, you know, Niners were leading twenty-three to seventeen, uh, not twenty-three to seventeen, uh, twenty-three to seven. And then all of a sudden, Jimmy G throws that pick, and then here comes the Cowboys, uh, slowly and surely marching their way, thanks to their MVP, yes, Nickelodeon valuable player Dak Prescott. So the, the Niners were able to hold off the Dallas Cowboys. And a lot of it had to do because, well, the Cowboys are just terrible at game managing. <laughs> they, they they just made so many mistakes. And another mistake that they made was letting Dak Prescott run it down the middle and um, try to spike it with less than five seconds left. So the Niners held on thanks to the Cowboys' stupidity, 23-17, to, to go to Lambeau Field and face the Green Bay Packers. So, you know, the Packers, they're coming off their... Um, Another recent successful season, um, going 13 and four, laying the claim to the top seed um, in the NFC for the second straight year. Um, but you know, you gotta say, with this um, Green Bay Packers team, the 2021 Packers, you know, it's been a roller coaster of sorts. You know, especially with Aaron Rodgers, um, with all the media attention, all the drama that's been pointing towards this man, this bad man. You know, it's been kind of crazy to see, um, kind of see, uh, crazy to see, you know, um, in, in light of all the drama, all the drama towards Aaron Rodgers, all the hate, all the hate towards this man. Um, some of it deservedly so, um, of what, what went down, um, in the past year. Hey, they're, the, they're still the top seed in the, in the NFC and one of the favorites to win the Super Bowl in February. So, if you don't know what I'm talking about, let's go through a brief like recap of what Aaron Rodgers ha- exactly had done <laughs> off the field um, in the past year and during the season. So obviously, I mean nothing like you know too crazy, but you know it was around the time of the 2021 NFL Draft. Um, I even talked about this last year. Um, you know, it was news broke out that Aaron Rodgers wanted out of the Packers. I mean that report later was debunked by the. The Packers themselves and Aaron Rodgers. Um, he just want he wanted out. Um, he he was like like confused. He was mad about 
them picking Jordan Love in the previous draft of 2020. And he was furious. But then I mean, just because um, the, Packer, uh, the Packers and Rodgers debunked it, you know, it's still in the minds of everybody that a trade um, this past offseason, uh, um, this next offseason um, is on the, t- it may still be on the table, um, still spec- being speculated um, by just about everyone um, throughout, not just throughout the regular season, but right now. So anything is possible. So anyway, another incident that occurred was that, you know, Aaron Rodgers testing positive for COVID um, before the week nine matchup against the Kansas City Chiefs. And he was also found lying about his vaccination status. Um, and during this during this time, um, when back in the preseason, um, he mentioned that he was immunized. Um, whatever that means, he say I guess he's trying to say that he's immune to COVID. So he was also found committing multiple violations of the NFL's COVID protocols for unvaxxed players, like you know, not wearing masks in press conferences or on the sidelines or going to porties. Um, you know, I mean, it, it's Rogers' decision. I don't really care what he does, but you know, rules are rules. But it is what it is. So. All, all this drama, all this banter with the with Aaron Rodgers, in spite of all that, he was still performing at an MVP level. You know, he has a big case. He has a very strong case as to why he should be a the back to back MVP um, for this year. He was still performing at a very high level. Uh, his supporting cast of Devontae Adams, Aaron Jones, and then you had reserves like. Um, Marquez Valdez Scantling, Alan Lazard, AJ Dillon performing at a high level as well. And then defensively, um, even though you didn't have um, your key players like Jair Alexander um, at corner, Zadarius Smith, and Whitney Merciless at linebacker, they would be lost for the season um, at some point um, during the regular season. You know, the Packers defense has played solid against their opponent, and even they were doing bad. <laughs> Against um, uh, against the opposition, Aaron Rodgers was still there to bring them back into the game. So, you know, talking about this thirteen and four record, you know, they didn't they didn't start that way. You know, they didn't start out winning. You know, they actually started out pretty shitty. Um, they went to the land of all elite wrestling, um, because um, New Orleans was in a terrible time, um, during the month of September, and they got their ass kicked by the New Orleans Saints. And that turned out to be a wake-up call um, to the Packers because they went on a much larger um, winning streak, winning the majority of the games. And they only wound up losing to the Chiefs without Aaron Rodgers, and they had to start Jordan Love. Uh, They wound up losing to the Vikings on a last-second field goal, and then they lost to the Lions when they already had the top seed and they didn't have anything to play for. So overall, you know, this Packers season, again, very successful. Um, they got another good year out of Aaron Rodgers and another good year out of playing everyone else. Um, now the thing is, the question is, can they follow that up with a Super Bowl win? That begins on Saturday night in Lambeau Field against the 49ers. You know, some storylines heading into this game, uh, however, um, for the 49ers, you know, the health of, of three key players. Um, defensively, Nick Boza and Fred Warner. Uh, Nick Boza got kneed in the head um, by accident by one of his own teammates um, in the second quarter, and he never came back um, in the second half. So despite that, um, the 49ers pass rush was still pretty damn good against the, the Cowboys' offensive line, getting to Prescott um, for much for much of that second half. But against Aaron Rodgers, it's going to be a tough battle if Nick Bosa is not able to play and is not able to clear concuss- concussion protocol um, for Saturday for Saturday night's game. And then Fred Warner, he suffered a ankle injury, but it seems like he's 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 doing okay. He's good to go for Saturday, so that's some positive news for the Niners defense. And then on offense, Jimmy Garoppolo, um, he suffered a shoulder sprain. I don't know where he suffered it from, but um, with Jimmy Jimmy Glass, like it, it, he's he suffers a lot of injuries. So you got Jimmy Garoppolo suffering not just a thumb injury, but you also have him suffering a shoulder injury. And um, like it, 
it, it seems like he he's going to play, but with those cold conditions, like that may numb him. That may affect him a lot. Um, and then this, you know, the four, this Fort Niners secondary is once again going up against Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams. Um, is this going to be the same Fort Niners secondary that's going to get torched like they did in Week Three against the Packers, or is it the Niners secondary that, um, you know, that does get torched, but not as torched as they did like in the for most of the season? So that's going to remain the question. And then. That Packers offensive line that's getting uh, David Bakhtiari back, if they hadn't already in Week 18 against the Lions, going up against that 49ers defensive line, yeah, even without Nick Bosa, is still a pretty formidable front. So that's going to be a tall task for the Niners to go up against that Packers offensive line and try to get mount some pressure onto Aaron Rodgers. So it's going to be a, a big get um, for the Niners. And then for the Packers, you know, on the on defense, you're getting Jair Alexander back, you're getting Zadarius Smith back, you're getting Whitney Merciless back, and it's a big get. It, those are big like uh, returns for the defense. Now they haven't played in a while, and you know how much will rust affect them? How much will it impact the defense? Like, what's the rotation going to be? Are they going to be starting? That remains that remains to be the question. So, how much will those, their returns? impact this defense and will it impact this defense is going to remain the question some keys to victory for both teams starting with the 49ers um you you need to attack this packers team with the running game and it's, it isn't just because of the weather it's because the, this packer the packers weakness still remains the run defense like they're not very good at stopping the run they couldn't stop dalvin cook um and they couldn't certainly couldn't stop the 49ers during that nfc championship game and Certainly, they still have their problems uh, trying to stop the run, um, even during um, the games that they were winning in. So, this should be a similar formula for Kyle Shanahan to exploit against Green Bay's soft spot. You know, you got a good rookie running back in Elijah Mitchell. Um, Debo Samuel, for whatever reason, still <laughs> likes to run the ball. But either way, this is a weakness that the Packers should um, should definitely be exploited by. Um, Jimmy Garoppolo, injured or not. He has to play a near perfect game. I mean, he did okay for three quarters. I mean, he didn't fuck up the joint, but then it was the fourth quarter interception that nearly had the Cowboys complete their comeback. So he needs to play infinitely times better. He can't be like sailing the ball too high. He can't try to like make some stupid interceptions like wide open. He can't be fumbling the ball. I mean, even though the offensive line protected him pretty well, not allowing a sack, but still. He has to play and act like this could be his last game in San Francisco, even though it clearly is going to be his last season. Um, but still, you you gotta play like this is gonna be like like your job is on the line. You gotta play with aggression, make some crazy ass decisions with the ball, find your receivers in stride, and they will take care of the rest. Just do something, Jimmy G. Like play with play like your your. NFL 49er career is on the line. Do something. Make like like surprise me in a good way on Saturday. For the Green Bay Packers. Um, you know, Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams, I mean, it's simple for them. You know, do their thing. Burn the 49ers secondary into the ground. Smash them. Super smash them. It's it's not that hard. Um, the Packers secondary has to limit um the 49ers' biggest uh weapon right now, and that's not George Kittle. It's Debo Samuel. Um, he, he's a threat on the run, and he's a threat in the air. So the Packers have to do everything in their power um, to shut him down and force others like Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle, Jawan Jennings, pretty much everyone not named Debo to step up. So you know, for the Niners, they lucked out of a collapse in the first round thanks to the Cowboys fucking things up um, for themselves even more. But, uh, yeah, they're not playing the Cowboys for the second straight week. They're not playing a team that doesn't implode as hard as the Dallas Bears. This th- this could be the week um, that the 49ers playoff prophecy. Yes, these delusional playoff hopes. This, this could be the week that their playoff prophecy gets fulfilled. And what do I mean by playoff prophecy? Well, let me tell you. You know, they make this a crazy second half push. And then they get their playoff spot in week 18. And then 
first round comes, they get smashed, only they don't get smashed in the first round, so then they get to the second round, and then they finally get what, what what's coming to them. Jimmy G, or Jimmy Garbage Fail, as we like to call him here, the Jimmy Garbage Fail side of Jimmy G comes out, and the fluky secondary, um, they get what's coming to them. A super smashing of epic proportions in the cold ass weather of Green Bay, and it could be snowing too, by Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers, who are going to move on to the NFC Championship game and set the stage for the 49ers to finally move on from Jimmy Garbage Fail. So, I'm rolling with the Green Bay Packers. But hey, every time I pick the, against the Niners here on this show, and as a Niner fan, the 49ers end up winning. So, <laughs> here I am again, picking against the 49ers. So, you can hate me all you want, Niners fans, but the truth shall set you free. So, the playoff prophecy may finally get fulfilled on Saturday when the 49ers get super smashed by the Green Bay Packers in cold ass Lambeau Field. And I know, I know, they they have their history of beating Aaron Rodgers in the playoffs. It's go, it's uh, it, fun fact, it's going to be soon the 10th anniversary of Colin Kaepernick putting an ass whooping on the Green Bay Packers in the 2012 divisional playoffs. And it's, it's a two year anniversary of the Niners putting an ass whooping on the Packers in the NFC Championship game in 2019. So, that narrative, though, and that being said, that historic narrative changes on Saturday when the 49ers playoff prophecy that ends in a super smashing uh, of them getting super smashed happens Saturday night in Green Bay. The Green Bay Packers are going to super smash ultimate the 49ers and go to the NFC Championship game. <laughs> 